Major Thrive Nation, I've got a repeat guest, probably one of the most important breathwork specialists in the world, Niraj Naik. He was on the show two years ago. I went through his term of breathwork. We've recommended to the tribe he had Major Thrive because it's so brilliant uh, and just a privilege to have him on because he's doing incredible work and he's just written a new book called Breathwork, so we're going to go through that. So welcome back to the show, Niraj. Uh, great to be back, man. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, I know you've got so many connections in South Africa, but what have you been up to for the last two years? Yeah, what have I been up to? Wow, it's been two years already. So yeah, yeah. time flies. Well, the last two years has been a lot about uh, really trying to hone in on making our instructor successful. So we've really been developing the course to make it really stand out as much as possible. Uh, in terms of like the science, the application, the uh, the core kind of issues that we can fix or help with breath work and really making into a pharmacy of techniques rather than like just a one size fits all. So this is what we've been really working on and just I've been doing a lot of retreats here in Ibiza so we've seen many, many transformations over the last two years, like hundreds of people have come to Ibiza, experienced these retreats, and we've even done like a festival here and seen some so many incredible breakthroughs, just not just with like participants, but um, of a normal kind of a wellness retreat that we do sometimes, but actual instructors who come, who come with, um, you know, certain maybe issues that they've been wanting to work on, they haven't been able to solve themselves and then coming, transforming during the retreat and then going, wow, now I know what I'm actually teaching. You know what I mean? Now I really get it. Yeah. So it's been really cool to see these um, amazing experiences. And what then we've also been doing is perfecting the music side. So we create a big library of music tracks for um, our instructors to use. And we've gone really deep on the production and made it the best it can be. I've got some incredible other uh, music artists who are like close friends of mine, who are super talented, who have dedicated, um, you know, to making this music the best it can be. So I'll give a shout out to Hernan Suarez from Argentina, uh, Orlando Alvarez from uh, Colombia, lives there at the moment. Um, and, uh, and we've got some new artists as well, emerging as well, actually one from South Africa, believe it or not, we had uh, some artists from South Africa come, come and do a southern Soma breath journey as well. So that's getting released soon. So we're, we're getting like our community to create uh, content as well, like music content and other other things as well, like from logos to artwork to so on. It's really like we're, we're becoming a real creative community as well. It's like a hub of amazing people that we're bringing together. So it's been great. Yeah, no, it sounds absolutely incredible. But maybe you want to just touch on these transformational journeys. I've been in medicine or natural medicine 25 years, doctor of Chinese medicine, lectured over 12,000 medical professionals, you know, run a podcast now, learn so much, you know, reading about 30 books a year, just love learning, just can't learn more than, than I can, you know, just sucking it in. But tell us about some transformational journeys of people that tried traditional or non-traditional complementary medicine and were just stuck and they just couldn't move and they came out there and and they had healing and wholeness and maybe you can just think of maybe a male and female that people can relate to which i think is crucially important yeah yeah sure certainly so well we've had so many um over the years it's incredible like so we've had um around eight and a half thousand people go through our 21 day awakening journey, which really is a protocol of a special breathwork practice that creates a dose of intermittent hypoxia in a set step by step protocol um, over three weeks, which mimics <laughs> what they do in these therapeutic clinics with machines, which costs like 60 to $8,000 for a session with 21 day awakening journey is like not even 10 percent is like one percent of that cost right is uh, yeah yeah no, no, i want to i want to talk about it is this where people come to ibiza and they do this because i know this course is online i know your course very well the 21 day journey yeah. i've done the sober breathwork so just is there a place that people come that gets surrounded by people doing breathwork with the music and a community where the healing happens uh, the 21 day awakening journey so far has been done online but this is the one that generates the most powerful transformations because 
you're doing it consistently every day and it's a protocol over three weeks. So we get like, uh, I mean, when we log on to the final calls and you get everyone's feedback, you hear so many different stories. So I'll give you a couple of case studies. One, uh, which really it hits me like at core level is because she had a similar issue as me. I had ulcerative colitis, uh, which is an autoimmune disease. And um, uh, Letitia, she basically, the doctor said it's not curable. She's going to be, you know, maybe having a, a colon removed. And she went through our 21 days and had like a miraculous breakthrough to the point she had a whole new transformation and lease on life and became a, a ambassador herself. She went and did the instructor training. So she went from like what she says herself, zero to hero in three weeks. Because over that time, she managed to get back to normal health. She followed step by step the health protocol that's in there and fixed her gut issues. She had a, a series of different autoimmune issues, which all got resolved um, over time, over the period of you know a few months after the, the, the session, because the effects carry on, you know, they, they don't just stop. Uh, especially if you carry on with the daily practice. And uh, yeah, she made a dramatic breakthrough. So she's one of the really standout ones. And you can see a video testimony actually on the 21 Day Awakening Journey page on our website. So there's that. Um, and then there's uh, like, we get, there's so many, like where do we start? Because there's um, people who have healed themselves from health related conditions, but then we've also got athletes um, who've elevated their uh, performance, you know. And on our retreats, we get people coming, reporting so many incredible stories from healing gut issues like what I had, also colitis, which is really good, um, close to my heart because I made this course for people who have autoimmune, actually, who don't have to suffer. But then I realized the side effect of this is that it has a knock-on beneficial effect in many other areas of life. If you're not sick, maybe your normal health, you can accelerate your as if you're an athlete, your performance. If you're an artist, you can become more creative. You can be more visionary. Uh, if you um, hate your job and you want to find a new direction, you can get gl clarity for the future. So we have many stories like this of people who, you know, in different areas, um, have had experienced these sorts of transformations. You know, there's other people who who have got it all. They've got it all, but they've become bored with existence and life, or become a bit disillusioned with the way the world's going. And then boom, they've transformed and create a new sense of meaning and purpose out of this. So the 21 days is really one of our most flagship trainings. But we've had people who have come to the, the instructor training retreats, who have had like chronic pain issues. And I do this uh, process using partly the breath, but special visualization techniques, because with Sarah Breath, we have therapeutic breath work. I call it breath therapy, which is using the breath with therapeutic change techniques. And, you know, we've had people with like chronic back pain who haven't been able to release this. Just on the last retreat, we had somebody um, who came called Caroline, uh, Carolina from Germany. She had like a serious tension and pain uh, in a uh, part of a throat and back and she released all of this during one 10 minute session that we did so this is like a more fast transformation that can happen and then we have like people having amazing breakthroughs just with the breathwork journeys itself in fact i've been working with uh clients who are quite high net worth people who are making a big impact in the world and you know so the billionaire types their challenges are are on a level that you cannot even imagine. It's incredible what they have to go through because they're dealing with, you know, like decisions which can mean that 20,000 people are out of a job tomorrow. So there's a whole nother level of stress you have to take on. And then when you go public with a company, you also have the stress of now you're answering to a board of directors. And I don't know if you know, like in Silicon Valley, there was a lot of layoffs because a lot of these uh, financial like, investors and even banks are starting to collapse. The funding is starting to get taken away. People are pulling the sh you know, uh, strings a bit more, tightening the strings. So there's a lot of pressure for these tech CEOs. 
So I'd been, I'd been working with one who had been kind of attacked from within his own company. He'd been the CEO for many years. And he said that the Soma breath techniques is what saved him basically. Otherwise he could have, could have gone down a really bad path, you know, mm. which is actually what happens to a lot of these very powerful individuals in very uh, high responsible jobs is the pressure is, is almost inhumane. You can't handle it as a human. So either you self-destruct, self-tabotage. Unfortunately, some people even commit suicide. That's like a, the worst it can get. Um, and then luckily people find a third path and that's this spiritual path and they have spiritual awakenings using the breath. Yeah. Oh, powerful. And, and how important is are these retreats? Like, well, because you get surrounded by like-minded people, you know, I think of the Joe Dispenza, like getaway weeks and people coming to Ibiza. You know, I've seen a lot of your Instagram reels and we'll put links to that. Brilliant. The music and just the, the, the vibrational energy of other people in the room. What does that do to sort of the, just the human being? Yeah. So I think what one of the magic of summer breath is like they say your vibe attracts your tribe is that the core team, the people that come who facilitate on the retreats are so high vibe and just so breath, the message we put out is so high vibe. We tend to attract really amazing energy into the group, right? From the participants who come. And what happens is quite often participants who come, they feel alien to their environment. So they don't feel like they belong sometimes in the areas that they're in or they feel alienated or they don't feel supported. So sometimes they feel quite alone and they feel like they're doing this all on their own. So when they come to a summer breath retreats, what happens is suddenly they meet all these like minded people. And really what it is, is a party for a week. It's a lot of studying, but in a fun way. So it's really fun learning, but you're also experiencing the magic of what we've created with summer breath and having a lot of fun and celebrating life the whole time. So this in itself just automatically transforms people, heals people. And then what we have is because we have the WhatsApp group uh, for the retreat, the participants become friends and they stay friends and the connections carry on. In fact, we've got WhatsApp groups where messages are, you know, still uh, being sh posted from a year ago or even two years ago. We have uh, WhatsApp groups that are still active. So that's how like connected people become. And that connection is something from the soul. It's a soul level uh, connection, which is the most healing transformation you can get. You know, mm. the community is the cure in summer breath. Brilliant. And, and what about the music, Niraj? Uh, how important is it? I mean, you're a musical professional and you put, you're working with artists all over the world. It's, it seems like when I get into breathwork, if I've got the music, my music and the rhythm, it, it, it like just takes it to another level. Like, I mean, I do breath work every single day. It, it doesn't matter, you know, and I use different things like the Apollo and brain tap and I combine it with infrared sauna and a whole bunch of different things and cold. And, you know, it's been incredible, but it seems like if you get the right music, the right beat, uh, it makes a significant difference. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Music is so important to uh, what we do in so and breath. Like for me, music is medicine. So let's go back in time to when music was a big core part of the way of life of human beings, but a spiritual way of life. And this is the time of the Vedas. Okay, so the Vedic Rishis actually wrote a book dedicated to music. It's uh, like Nada Yoga or Sama Yoga, right? And this is the book of sound, medicine as sound, right? So they knew the power of mantra, of sound, of meditation of song of hymns and in fact you know like in even the bible there are whole books dedicated to hymns right where where like actually a lot of the lessons were spoken through hymns and song so over the years for some reason commercialization i think and just the organization of society music got turned into a different purpose Okay, it, it got used now to make a lot of money, right? To even create cultures, right? If you look at, look at how music shapes culture, right? From gangster rap to the hippie music from the 60s, 70s to underground dance music. They, there's a tribe and a culture and a way of life that goes with each one of those types of music, right? Some, in my opinion, 
more uh, sustainable and better, uh, especially for children than others. Now I've become a dad, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm mindful of these things a bit more, right? So uh, the music you listen to is really, really a core part of your identity, right? If you think about it, right? And actually music with words has the power to change your opinion about things, your belief systems. It's one of the most powerful hypnotic tools for shaping culture that exists is music and song, right? Look at the, some of the, the songs of the, you know, the, the, the Beatles, for example. You know, they, they, they inspired revolution, right? So there's so much power from music, but it, can, it has to be used responsibly because of this, right? And I believe that the commercial music industry has somehow um, used music, corrupted it, in a, maybe intentionally or not, in a way to actually degrade society, not improve it or upgrade it. And this is something that I've been really, you know, I've been deeply touched by because I actually was a, I used to run raves back in the day. And these raves were like a real celebration of life. People would come together, uh, they would dance together, it would be a real unity and peace. And in fact, the, we were real hippies back then. We were doing this because we wanted to kind of stand against this very archaic oppression that was coming from the government, right, clearly and bullshit that was going on, like, you know, things like the Iraq war and all that. It's like, what the hell, right? We were disgruntled youth against the society, right? So um, even the prodigy wrote a song around that time called Fuck em and Their Law, right? And it's and their whole album, Music for the Jewish Generation, really s spoke to the disgruntled youth at that time. And they even had like this uh, kind of illustration image of a guy with a Molotov cocktail throwing it with a bunch of police like coming at them because you know there was there was anger there was disillusionment the youth were frustrated right there was like pure corruption going on in society you could see it people were waking up to it right and had been for many years so underground music had this movement about it and then it got commercialized right it went from being underground to mainstream right and DJ started getting paid like you know, 100, 200, 250 grand a set, a thousand dollars a set, 250k a set, right? So crazy money. So music then turned into DJs becoming um, superstars, the new gods, right? And actually, people worshipped DJs like they're going to celebrations, you know, ceremonies, uh, like you would in, you know, going to church. And I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's fine. Commercialization is cool. And still there was a lot of amazing music being produced and a lot of that music was actually helping people to heal maybe from a shitty day at work and you know frustration with their relationship or whatever. It was a, it was a way for them to just escape a little bit. Um, however, some of the real meaning behind music, what it could do to actually inspire people and, and shift people in, and wake them up out of this trance that culture has put them into, to what's really going on, right? Had started to get lost a bit. And and also music, in my opinion, uh, had lost its meaning when it came to healing, right? So in the yogic practices, music was a core part of this um, thousands of years ago because the music would accompany the mantra. The music would accompany the asana. The music would accompany the breath, right? It would go together. And the music also, the notes and the rhythms, the intonations between each note had a specific purpose. It would touch the soul in a certain way. There was a code to it. All right? Music had a, a real code of action that would create a result. So music had a purpose and it was very powerful for healing and transformation. So when I got sick, right, I, I had gave, given up on music, making music for a while because I, I was actually quite involved in the commercial music industry. One of my close friends was the manager of Muse, a huge band. And he spent like that time really kind of disillusioned himself with the commercial music industry. He'd always been a renegade. And he tried really hard to kind of um, discourage me from getting into this mainstream music. And he was like, like, why don't you do something with 
pharmacy. Like you, you see, there's a lot of holes in that world, and healing. Like you, 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 you know, because I'd helped him a lot with his own stress levels. I got into like kind of health coaching a little bit. So he was encouraging me to go more into that line of work, and I wanted to be more in his uh, world, right? And anyway, in the end, what happened was, I got sick. I had a dis. I got disillusioned myself. Had a nervous breakdown. And it was going back in, in to try and um, heal myself where a third path opened up because I had two choices. One, have my colon removed, right? Because I was shitting blood 40 times a day or be a guinea pig for a drug that hadn't been tested before, right? So luckily I took this third path and it was a bold choice I made to actually have some faith in my own culture, right? Of uh, India, of yoga and pranayama and kind of Ayurveda. And a dear friend of my, mine called Swami M. Kananda now, she's a close friend now, she is a yoga teacher and she said to me, look, you, got, you could be an amazing role model if you can reverse this condition. So she inspired me again to get and back into studying yoga, Ayurveda, and actually also um, pay attention to music a bit more because that's my soul. She said, music is your soul. Like, you need to, in fact, I love the line, music is the language of your soul. It really is. It's how we communicate. Uh, and it doesn't matter what color you are, what background you are, what religion you are. You know, the same piece of music can touch all different types of people, right? So going back into that journey, I started to listen a lot to meditative music, brain moving training music that was for free on YouTube. I just found it by accident. And I got a lot of relief from this. And she had taught me the simple breathing patterns of like doubling your exhale time and versus your inhale time breathing in a rhythm so i started to breathe in a rhythm like this to meditative music and that combination was so soothing and so relaxing that it allowed me to get into these deep meditative states where i was now able to communicate directly to this on a soul level and i'd read a book called the power of your subconscious mind by dr joseph murphy which is all about using the power of affirmations word and conviction and belief to rewire, reprogram a corrupt operating system of your mind, which can lead to a autoimmune disease where your immune system starts to attack health, unhealth, uh, healthy cells, right? So this is where you get these um, issues. So in this amazing state of being, I got this ability to reprogram. And this was a huge part of the catalyst for my eventual recovery. But I wasn't that happy with the kind of level of music that was out there on YouTube. So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to have a go at producing my own stuff. So this sparked my creativity, my interest back into making uh, my own music for myself. So I decided to do that. And then I realized, actually, wait a minute, dance music also has a beat to it, four to the four bleat. And most dance music, like house music, trance, techno, is at like around 120 BPM. BPM. I mean, there's faster stuff as well, but most like good, like soulful house music is around 120 BPM. In fact, when you open up the sequencer on Logic, which is why I use, it's set default at 120 BPM, right? Then I started to look at and do some research, and I found that over the last 30 years, majority of the top 10 hits have been at around 120 BPM. So there was something about 120 beats per minute that was really interesting, special. So I realized actually that it's a harmonic of 60 beats per minute, all right? 60 beats per minute. Um, if you just double the, the rhythm uh, rate, you'll get 120, right? So 60 is half of 120. So what I realized was that with music now, we can breathe in beats. We can breathe to the beat and breathe in seconds. So uh, most pranayama techniques are done to, uh, well, rhythmic breathing in pranayama is done to uh, uh, seconds or a beat of some form. So either you counting, using a mantra to count, but they're trying to get you to breathe to a rhythm that is around like, you know, 60 um, uh, beats per minute, right? So 60 seconds. So, so I started to do this myself, because 60, if you look at 60 BPM, it's like also your resting heartbeat, right? Usually for most people on average, their resting heartbeats around 60 beats per minute. So actually, I, I started to create my own rhythmic breathing tracks at 60 beats per minute and also 120, and it was magic. Because I also studied a lot of heart math science about 
harmonic breathing, coherent breathing, where you breathe in a perfect rhythm to to um, to a beat, right? But they don't really talk about beats; they talk about seconds. So I was like, well, I'm going to try this with rhythmic music, and this had an amazing effect. I could just feel it. So then, in my travels, I came across uh, Wim Hof, right? And uh, I was like, well, I found the the perfect front man to my music all right this is the guy this so I, I knew him way before he's super famous like this and um and i made the wim hof method music and soundtrack it's all the music on his app is all my music still and uh and we became good friends and he loves music he's a musician in fact um a lot of the the kind of top uh like known, known wellness practitioners or like people like him uh, these peak performance people, they love music. They're, they're, they've also got these hidden musical talents. They're waiting to be awoken, I found. Like Wim, Wim just woke up, boom, this amazing, like, uh, you know, love for making music. So we made a bunch of music together. And um, and so I started to experiment a lot with different breathwork styles with music. And then when I was in Copangan, I, I formed this amazing little band of musicians I called Breathing Beats. And we started to make really cool music together. And this became the soundtrack to these like breathwork journeys. And so like we would do um, like certain journeys that are more like holotropic breathing. And actually Stanislav Grof also says that music is a core part of his journeys, right? So I, I didn't know this until later on when I started to look into the holotropic breathwork and rebirthing even. And holotropic uses really like um, kind of a roller coaster ride of different types of music, um, but you're still just free, free breathing to it. You're not doing any breathing to a beat. So I was like, well, let's see what happens when we breathe to the beat instead. And in tantra, tantric yoga, rhythmic breathing is core, especially when you use the bandhas with um, the rhythm and activating the life force energy with it. So I was like, well, let's experiment with this with music and see what happens where you breathe to the beat. And this is when I started to see and witness because we were doing breathwork journeys for like 100, 200 people at a time. Uh, the most I did in Copenhagen was like 400 people at a festival that we, we used to run called Ecstatica. Uh, it was incredible. It was like people were coming up to me saying this is the most trans transformational experience I've ever felt in my life and I got had like people having conversations with God I had people finding new clarity and purpose like manifesting what they really want from this and it was just incredible all of this uh, was so powerful um, you know to witness and so many people were asking me like how do I how do I learn to do this can do you do certification so from that is what inspired us to create so many breath as a certification school where the, the foundation of it is breathing to beats, breathing in perfect harmony and unison to music. Yeah. Okay. Well done, eh? Using your own gifts, talents, using your music to combine it with breath work, incredible. And and some breath, uh, spend some time there, obviously the, the rest relax and, you know, looking at the energy, the longevity, the detox, the cleanse, all these things on your course, which are pretty incredible. If someone wants just a quick taste in terms of, using music because I, I don't know but it has to be loud it has to surround you you know i just think of myself i'm, I'm a runner i've done over forty thousand kilometers on the road i just love it and i got my music in there and i ran to a you know a beat and i breathe to a you know a beat but if someone wants to taste your music or just doing breath work where can they go yeah, yeah great question uh well just let me just explain as succinctly as possible what's the benefit of breathing to a beat and a little bit of the science, right? Just just to, um, for people to understand this because uh, rhythmic breathing is the foundation of, of yogic breathing, all right? And some magic happens when you breathe in a rhythm. So when you breathe in, your heartbeat goes up a bit. When you breathe out, your heartbeat goes down a bit. So when you breathe in a rhythm, you create this um, coherent rhythm and pattern with your heartbeat which is known as coherence, all right? Or what happens is your heart rate variability becomes more coherent. And this has this amazing effect of harmonizing all the biorhythms in your body, all the functions in your body that are rhythmic. Pretty much every function in your body is rhythmic. You have circadian rhythms, infradium, or tradian rhythms, like your menstrual cycle if you're a woman, 
uh, your sleep wake cycle, even digestion and your heartbeat has a rhythm to it as well. So everything is rhythm rhythmic. When you get stressed, like when you when life throws its shit at you or you just go you get triggered by something, the rhythms go off balance, right? And even got an infection or something, your rhythms go off balance. So just a few minutes of rhythmic breathing a day can restore balance and harmony within. Because every function of your body is subservient to the rhythm of your breath, which is fascinating, right? So HeartMath did studies on this, and they also showed that your heart is an amazing transmitter of electromagnetic fields. So when you breathe in a rhythm and you create this state of coherence, you actually amplify this heart field, right? And so if you breathe together in a group at the same rate, and this is what the beauty of Soma Breath is, is that we all breathe together because the music times the breath. So we all breathe together at exactly the same rate. This creates this amazing group coherence, this amplification of everyone's heart fields, and this strengthens the bond between everyone. I think this is why people come to our retreats and become lifelong friends and connect so deeply. It's amazing. So, so that's a little bit of the science. Now, there's different patterns of breathing as well. You can breathe in for two beats, out for four beats, or in for four, out for eight. And this uh, actually has the effect of switching on the parasympathetic, switching off sympathetic and putting into your rest and relaxed state, okay? And even into a more creative state. So every time you breathe with the, double the exhale time to your inhale time, you actually switch on the parasympathetic and you actually optimize oxygenation of your body tissue cells, all right? When you breathe in a perfect rhythm, uh, in for four beats, out for four beats, for, for example, where it's uh, this equal lengths, this equal breathing balances the nervous system. So you get more of a balance in emotions, okay? And it, this is what creates the harmonic balance within. And then if you double the inhale time versus exhale, like that, for example, actually, this is more like Wim Hof's breathing, right? Where you actually stimulate the sympathetic nervous system because you're breathing in longer than you breathe out. When you breathe in, you stimulate sympathetic. So this creates adrenaline and it prepares you for going into battle. So that's more like the Wim Hof style breathing. So there's three different types of patterns. You can experiment with them. You can come up with your own patterns and grooves that feels good to you for whatever uh, issue you want to work with. All right. So we give these different patterns in the right context, the right sequence with really epic music. And we also create these breath journeys that uses breath retention. So rhythmic breathing follows very well into breath holds and creating a state of intermittent hypoxia where you go into very deep meditative states and the music, the beats cut out in the music and the music turns into just pads, atmospheres where you just tune into a single note and this has this amazing effect of stilling the mind, all your thoughts calm down, your voice in your head that worries about the future, the past, quiets down, you become completely present in the most deepest state of meditation and boom, from here comes clarity, from here comes inspiration, from here comes the next divine download that could push humanity forward. So these are the sequences, these journeys that we create. And then we also do ones with fast rhythmic breathing patterns, which actually charges you up because they're faster rhythmic breathing patterns and using the life force energy. And these take you into these psychedelic altered states of reality. And these are like, like you know, going on a plant medicine journey in themselves but they also because of the way we do it the nature of using tones your vocal tones and uh, energy locks also releases a lot of emotional energy that's stuck like trauma release is very powerful for these journeys so that kind of covers all the different types of practices that we do just to give you some context on why music is so important um, but answering your question uh, where do we find this well we actually have an app coming out so by the time this podcast maybe is released, I think our app will be launched. So on there, you're going to see the whole pharmacy of different breathing techniques with um, amazing uh, music that accompanies them all. Even music created by some of the top DJs on in Ibiza, like I've done, done a co-creation with Satori, uh, which is one of my favorite artists, uh, happens to be a good friend. And also there's more coming from other well-known artists. So it's not just all my music or our little team of musicians music we're getting some really amazing artists uh, well-known producers and djs also 
um, creating journeys for us. In fact, I've got my eyes on Hans Zimmer. One day I'm going to manifest Hans Zimmer to do one of the soundtracks. So I'm working on that. Oh. So, so the app's coming up, but we also have a YouTube channel. There's loads of free stuff on there already. We have our courses like the 21 Day Awakening Journey on the SomaBreath.com website. Um, also on Instagram, you're on our, if you join our Instagram, you'll see some free samples there as well on our website as well, SomaBreath.com. Brilliant. Or we'll come to one of our retreats. Yeah, you, know, you see, you got you got the physical, you got uh, online. You're going to do the app. I yeah. mean, well done to you because I think you you realize how important it is with regards to people's health and wellness, especially post COVID. Because I've never seen in my 25 year career people that are so distraught, in despair, discouraged. Uh, there is a collective consciousness of hope rising, but your average person that's in a big modern day city is in big trouble. We've seen in corporates, the CEOs that I coach, the executives, banks have brought us in with our corporate wellness. We've had more corporate work in the last three years than ever before. So there is, unfortunately, the light is rising, but there, there's a lot of despair and darkness that, that people yes. are suffering with. So well done to you. Maybe you can take us through just maybe a quick rhythmical breath now. Someone's listening now, they're either running or they're in the car, and maybe you do a, a 2-4 or 4-4 or four, four, something that people can sort of just have a quick taste uh, while they're listening. Well, do you want to do it with music? Yeah, if we can, it'll be incredible. All right, well, let me just, um, I'm going to play you, as we talked about the coherence, yeah. I'm going to play you a, a coherence track that is absolutely perfectly timed to the the physiological uh, rhythm that uh, HeartMath studied to be the best, which is 5.5, right? Five in, five seconds in, five seconds out. So and where can people find this, Niraj? Uh, yeah, actually, this one's for free on YouTube. Okay. So you can get it if you just type in coherence. Um, uh, if I can share my screen, then I'll... Yeah, yeah, go for it. Do it. Uh, if you just type in coherent breath on um, or heart coherence on and semi breath on YouTube, you'll find the track. But our app will have a longer version um, and different versions of it, different types of music. All right. Go for it. Yep. So you're just going to breathe um, in time with the music. When it says in, you're going to breathe in through your nose, into your diaphragm. Actually, when you breathe in through your nose, you almost automatically breathe through your diaphragm. It's hard to breathe into your chest through your nose. So always breathe in through your nose for the length of time of the, the track. So you'll hear me counting in, two, three, four. And then you're going to breathe out the same smooth rhythm on the exhale with no pause between the inhale and exhale. So it's a smooth rhythmic pattern. And you're going to try and just do it all through the nose. All right. Sometimes some people find it hard to exhale through the nose. Okay, when they're first dying out because they've been so used to mouth breathing, you can use your mouth just to slow the breath down, but try and keep your breath as smooth and slow and rhythmic as possible with the rhythm of the music. You ready? Yep. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
two past riders. Mm. Thinking of two. Something that brings you pleasure and joy as you do this session. Mm. Gives you gratitude. Four. And two. Make it real, make it present as though it's happening right now. In. That's right. Two. Three. Four. And two. Three. Four. In. Two. So the cool thing about this is that and as you practice two. this rhythmic breathing, it starts to train your breath to naturally. Two become rhythmic in the same rhythm two, three, five seconds in five seconds out in as two, three, four, and two, three, all right four, wow wow geez it just gives you such a light feeling light and just tingles here in my forehead and just this yeah real expanse and this uh yeah, I have like a little bit of a slight sweat and just a total, yeah, you know, just a, it's sort of a vision out here, like just an expanse coming out here. That's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing what the breath can do. It just chills you out, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, and I see, I see you just slip into it so easily now, Niraj. You just, you hear the music, you hear the beat. It just almost transforms you. And I suppose that's what you need in this crazy world. Where there's so many distractions, there's so much stimulation, there's so much noise. You need that just to all of a sudden take you into yeah. that into that space. Absolutely fantastic. Maybe take us through humming. Uh, your humming on uh, Instagram has been brilliant. I felt such clarity in this area here. Yeah. My forehead and the tingles and opening up. So I think maybe just explain. I think that was good. Explain humming. And the benefit of it uh, in terms of uh, maybe the research, the science, your own uh, experience and the people that have come into your retreats or on your courses, why humming is so important. And then maybe take us through an activity. Nice. Yeah. So humming, why is humming so important? Well, what happens when we hum? Well, when you hum in a specific way, it has to be done in a specific way. So the emphasis has to be on the mm sound and you vibrate here. So when you're humming, you're vibrating this area here, which is the paranasal sciences. So you could also say it's your third eye, right? But it's actually your paranasal sciences. And when you bring the vibration here, the way you can also uh, amplify this is get your tip of your tongue and point it, uh, the back of your teeth, right, pointing to the roof of your mouth towards this area. And then you just make this hum sound. Hmm. But here's something really interesting, some science. Actually, when you um, hum at a specific frequency, that frequency is 128 hertz. It's a sweet spot for creating the most amount of the active ingredient that gives you the benefits from humming, which is nitric oxide. So the benefits of humming is the stimulation of nitric oxide. Right, nitric oxide is like the miracle molecule of the body. It's antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. It's antioxidant. It's um, anti-inflammatory. It's it really has a amazing uh, use in various uh, functions of the body. And as we age, we run out of nitric oxide, and actually that's one of the reasons why we age. So it's important to keep this supply going into old age to prevent diseases of age, old age. Right now. Here's the thing with um, humming is that it's also a part of yoga because Om, Om, that chant is a hum and the emphasis should be on the M mm sound. Mm, om, that M mm sound is the hum, right? Now, let's put the music to it. So what I've done is I've made a track that is 128 hertz, which is a low C on the keyboard. So if you try and breathe uh, and hum with that frequency, then magic happens, right? So let's test this out now. So I'm just gonna uh, pull it up. OK, 
Okay, so, so for this, I'm going to play the tone. And all you need to do is just breathe in. Full breath in. And then... Um, Repeat that five minutes to ten minutes a day, and you get loads of health benefits. And even uh, do it in the sauna. In the sauna, it, it's even more powerful, right? The whole experience of chanting in the sauna is just magic. We do this a lot in our retreats. And also, what you're doing when you're humming is you're tapping into the vagus nerve. So this exercises vagus nerve and, and relaxes you. It calms you down. It, it switches on parasympathetic. Brilliant. So like when I do my corporates and all my keynotes, if I'm doing focus groups, if I'm speaking to executives, can start with just basically that rhythmical breathing and then start with the humming. It'll probably change the entire atmosphere before sharing. Amazing. That's it. Brilliant. You got it. Let's talk about Breathworks, your new book. I mean, I know you've been writing it. I think it's been now going to be released in February. Uh, people can obviously go to the, the course, Soma Breathwork Technique course. We'll put all the links in that. Um, actually, before we speak about your book, what, what's happening in Africa with uh, the Soma Breathwork Techniques and uh, the 21-day journey? Do you have anyone here that's qualified, certified, that's really sort of pioneering your work in Africa? Um, I'm not. I think we do have instructors there, but not so many. So we need all the help we can get. So okay. if you're willing to be a part of this, Absolutely. I find a great benefit I and mean, we've recommended to to our tribe. Obviously now having you on again, uh, things have changed. I think, you know, there's been significant mental ill health and performance. I mean, it's just crazy. Like over 50% of corporates, you know, in South Africa, especially in Johannesburg, are on antidepressants. And, and I'm not anti-antidepressants. They have their role, but they've just been overused and overprescribed and people are just left on them. They are necessary, I think, for some people, but most of the time, there are so many lifestyle factors, your own story, and, and, and many, many thousands of people that you've helped, that I've helped over the years, uh, without using uh, medicine or Western medicine. Um, so, yeah, I, I will, maybe we can get the connections from Natasha or the people here so we can really sort of promote it here in Africa. Okay, good. So let's talk about your book and, and the release okay. and, and what it's about uh, and, and, and how you've sort of upgraded it from the course or what you've added or, or what research and, and science you've found out in the last two years. Yeah, so the book's really um, a manual for the breath, uh, which should be given to every child and uh, every parent, actually, to teach the children because it needs to start at a young age, right? Like the younger you start, the the more habitual it becomes, the more benefits you get so the book is uh, going to go into a lot of the how-to all right and James Nestor did an amazing job of the uh, of the why all right and so there will be a lot of the why in there right and what breathwork is and the different styles but there's going to be a lot of more of the how-to like the actual techniques that will be in the book and uh, a lot of my um, insights and my personal insights like crazy stories that I've I've experience along the way and also the 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 spiritual uses of of breath work like what it can be used for in a more um deeper sense for humanity in terms of awakening people to what their real truth is so they can live more in alignment and you know what i believe we can do with the breath to solve some of the the big issues that are going on in the world like overconsumption is a huge problem um you know the the environment 
uh, damage is linked a lot to overconsumption. So if we can get people to be more happy with less, right, rather than more, more self-sufficient, that's going to help, you know, the world. But depression, as you said, is a huge problem in the world right now. And actually, breathing techniques can be a very powerful tool to lift people up and and actually heal things like trauma and uh, stress that has caused the depression in the first place. So I'm going to be going into that, exploring that, and giving some real actionable steps on what to do about it. That's right. Brilliant. Sounds incredible. And just let me know, is it is it a, able to sort of translate it to children? I think of my own kids, you know, and I've taught them some breathwork techniques and that I've done a lot of lecturing at schools and just the keynotes now at a very, very uh, prominent school in Johannesburg and just trying to teach people to take accountability or show them to take accountability of their health. And one of the biggest and easiest and free ways you can do is with your breath. So what, what do you think about translating it or, or bring it to the younger generation? Um, yes, yeah, so for the younger generation, um, what really is important is the breathing retraining uh, exercises, which actually Buteco uh, was the one who really brought that to the world with the Buteco method. However, the Buteco method can become like a bit boring to do and difficult to do. It doesn't f- always feel very pleasant for kids. So you have to teach them it, you know, even adults. It's not the most pleasurable technique to retrain your breath, especially if you have asthma and things like that, because you're you're reducing your breathing down to a point where you're slightly feeling like suffocating. And that's actually where the benefits come from. It's really bizarre how it works. But um, so to teach that to kids isn't always the easiest thing for them to maintain it. But there are little games you can play. Like um, one of the most important things is uh, to keep your breath at rest uh, a certain way. Now, way is subtle smooth silent the key is silent rhythmic diaphragmatic right and uh through the nose all right so with children if they breathe very hard and heavy or through their mouth they're often likely to get asthma as children right even adults right but we want to help the children first that they don't develop this and turn it into a condition later on so you can play a game with children because the silent breathing is important and that reduces the breathing. So what you can do is, you know, they love playing hide and seek, all right? And you, and you can tell the, the, the child, right, or whoever it is, that you can hear them and find them the way from breathing. So they need to keep their breathing as silent as possible, right? And then get them to start playing that. Mm. And then watch their symptoms go away of things like asthma from keeping their breath silent. Then that's proof for them. That's like proof now that actually this works and they feel it. It's like, oh, when I keep my breath silent and subtle and I don't breathe through my mouth, my asthma goes away. I can breathe better. So then it gives them the belief and then they're like more likely to make it into a habit later. Brilliant. I think so important to teach the next generation. Uh, last uh, question or last comment from Neeraj Naik. Uh, you're an inspiration to so many people, but give a message of hope for people listening out there. South Africa, you know, one of the first things we spoke about, you know, offline in South Africa, is, it's been a very difficult year, infrastructure problems and just a lot of corruption and power problems. And it's been, it's been a hard year. The World Cup was great, the win that we had, but we, we need to teach people practical things or, or messages that people can take on board because governments are not going to uh, help them. Government's going to enslave them. And they really need to take ownership and accountability through a community. And that's what I love what you said. Community is cure. So give a message of hope for people listening out there. Yeah. So this is the way I maintain uh, sanity in an insane world. Because right? <laughs> like, you just have to turn on the TV and you realize... The world's gone kind of mad on a mainstream, like broadcasted level from, um, you know, the the mainstream media. Like just watching that, you realize, oh, my God, this is everything's gone insane. But actually, you know what? That's a snapshot of a small portion of the real reality. Okay, now I've spent a lot of time traveling around the world. I've gone from so many different countries, you know, in the last just like... Uh, six months I've been to like 10 different places and I've met so many inspiring people so many positive people so many communities coming together 
so much abundance being created, so many um, innovations happening, and actually there's a big awakening going on. And here's the thing, whenever the world seems to go towards the dark, right, you have to remember that there is an equal and opposite uh, light on the other side. And what actually has been going on forever is this swing of the pendulum between light and dark, right? And when you wake up and you realize that it's just a pendulum that swings, okay, you can s try and like be more of a spectator of this theater that's going on, look at the world as a theater, and realize that uh, this has been going on forever, eternity, right? And true awakening is realizing that the dark and the light cannot exist without each other. One depends on the other. So wherever there's extreme light, there's also extreme dark. It's just the law of nature. And when you come to peace with that, that, that understanding, you become way more accepting of what's going on in reality. But then you can choose which side you want to play on. All right. Because actually what is light to one person is dark to another. And what's dark to one person is light to another. Right? It just depends on what side of the, 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 the playing field you're on. So this is a great realization. When you wake up, you realize actually light and dark coexist and are codependent with it on each other. And also it depends on which side you're on. So perception is everything, right? And therefore you can then choose your part to play in this great theater of life, because it is really like a, a game, a play, a theater. And you can choose which role you want to play, which which actor you want to be, right, in this in this great mystery of life. And then you just become a, an actor rather than a um, so um, um, uh, kind of, uh, so sucked into the drama. Do you know what I mean? You can step yeah. out of it and choose which side you want to be on and make a choice. Because it is a choice. I woke up. I I, I wasn't happy playing the role of a, a pharmacist. Wasn't happy. It made me sick. It made me disillusioned. Made me stressed. But there's loads of people who love that. They love that, that role. So that's the role they want to play. I wasn't playing it very well. So, but to a lot of pharmacists what i do now is completely insane and weird and not right and it's the dark side right right yeah. and in fact so a lot of uh religious and spiritual communities what we do is like pagan and uh, anti uh, you know it's satanic basically right mm. to, to a lot of people right but we know it's not so it depends on what side you're on what's right and what's wrong yeah. and um so I chose, I made a choice, I woke up, I realized what my values are, my core values are, and I've chosen to play this game, this role, and I feel much happier now, much more in my flow, and and I know that like, if I stay on this and stay true to my core values, uh, I will, as that has been the proof over the last few years, will be in this divine flow, and will flow and keep on growing and going wherever I really want to go. So. That's that's been the, you know, kind of the the acceptance and peace that I've come to, um, and and that's how I stay sane in this completely crazy and <laughs> mad world we're in. But I also know that there's a lot of amazing people coming together right now and waking up, and realizing what their truth is and what part they want to play, and uh, you know, and and that's great. That's amazing. It's awesome. Brilliant. Uh, well, I I really want to just uh, call you a healing brother or a healing friend and, and what a privilege to know you and have gone through your course and we'll do everything we can to promote your work because I, I truly believe in it so as soon as I got a hard copy of your book uh, hopefully we can do something on Instagram or our channels uh, with absolute pleasure we'll try and connect with as many of your instructors here in uh, in South Africa but I want to declare favor and blessing over you Neeraj Naik uh, you're an inspiration, you're a healer, you want to transform lives. Uh, it comes out, it doesn't matter who you're speaking to, uh, there's an essence from you that is it's just so healing and, and it's a healing balm, it's a healing oil and uh, it's going to carry on flowing and you've connected with communities, you're not trying to do it on your own, you're doing it with other people. So uh, thank you and, and, and just the courageous person that you are. Thank you so much, that means so much.